What's good everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. I'm Kenny, this is Courtney, and today we're gonna talk to you about raising dairy goats. This video is part of an entire series of how to grow your own food, sponsored by Homesteaders of America. They've got a playlist filled with videos where you can learn how to raise your own food however you decide, whether it be to raise dairy goats, raise pigs for meat, chickens for meat, grow your own vegetables, it doesn't matter. It's all there. In case you're new to our channel, we're gonna tell you a little bit about how we got here and who we are. Well, Courtney's gonna tell you. She's way better at it than I am. Kenny is a recovering city dweller. I am. I drug him here to the country. Kicking and screaming. <laughs> Mostly kicking and screaming. And then I talked him into some goats. You didn't talk me into goats. They just showed up. I mean, we talked about it. You talked, I listened, and then it just grew exponentially from there. And now there are a lot of goats and we milk them. Yes, we do. But our point is we didn't grow up milking cows or goats or anything. We grew up buying our milk at the store like everybody else. Well, actually I grew up with powdered milk, which was way worse. That's fair. And then became a huge cow's milk drinker. But now, I'm a goat milk drinker. We drink a ton of milk in our family. And uh, when we started thinking about how we could produce our own dairy, there was no way we were getting a cow. No. We just don't have the space. I don't have the interest in cleaning up cow poop. Nope. And, I mean, they're a little bit intimidating, which is how we landed on dairy goats. I know what you're thinking about goat's milk. Right? Do they? Like it tastes like a goat, smells like a goat. That seems accurate. It's kind that's, of yellow. That's pretty much my opinion initially. Right. Because I didn't know better. Not true. Not true. Not at all. In fact, many goats have milk that has a higher butter fat than cow's milk. So it's like sweeter and whiter and makes amazing cheese and butter. Yep. Tastes great with Oreos. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta have an Oreo. Yes. Or maybe like the entire sleeve. Well, moderation, Kenny. Fair enough. My point is that is not the goat's milk that we have. We have delicious goat's milk. Before you hop on Craigslist or go to your local livestock auction, there are some things that you need to know about goats. First thing, skip the livestock auction. Find a reputable breeder in your area you can look at the American Dairy Goat Association listing or you can hop on a Facebook group. The things you're gonna to wanna to look for in a reputable breeder is somebody who has milk records. Even if they're just barn records, they cared enough to track how much milk a goat was producing and breed goats that were good producers. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to see is a breeder who tests for things like CAE, CL, and Yonis, which are all very common goat transmissible diseases. The next thing to consider is how much milk you need. Do you need a full-size dairy goat that's gonna give you three quarters to a gallon of milk a day? Or do you need a quarter to half a gallon a day? And what are your space constraints? That's also going to dictate how large of a goat you can have. The goats that you're gonna look for that have really good tasting milk have that high butter fat content. The highest butter fat content comes from the Nigerian dwarf goat. The next highest is gonna come from your Nubian and uh, then you're gonna still get a really nice rich milk that makes good cheese and soap from your La Manchas. So those are the three breeds I recommend if you're looking for uh, a dairy producing animal. We have Nigerian dwarf goats. The reason that we went with a smaller goat is, well, we had never owned livestock and I felt much more comfortable with a 60 pound goat than I did with a 160 pound goat. As a first freshener, which means the first time a goat has had kids, uh, a good dairy goat or a good Nigerian dwarf goat will produce about a quarter of a gallon of milk per day. So about 32 ounces or two pounds of milk per day. Some of the things that you want to look for when you're selecting a goat. Now, if you're selecting a goat that is in milk, which is something you can do, you can buy a goat that is in milk, bring her home and milk her. And if you don't see one for sale, 
on a breeder's page, ask them. Most will have a goat that they have they might be willing to consider selling. What you wanna look for is that the goat is long. They've got a nice straight top line here. You want them to kind of have this triangle look. Like here's the point, you come down this way and you come back this way. Goats are ornery by nature, but if you're buying one in milk, you really want to see what their manners are like. Do they walk onto the milk stand well? Will they let you milk them without a big fight? Let's talk about what we're looking for in the udder. The first thing I'm going to look at on the udder is straight from the back. I'm going to look at how well the udder is attached and I'm going to look at the shape of the top of the udder. Is it a nice U shape or is it more of a point? That area is called the escutcheon, and you want it to be a nice curved shape because that allows for the udder to be really well attached to the body. The honey Rider here you will see has a nice U shape, and um, her udder really is very close to her body, but I'm getting the same amount of milk that I do from any other good dairy first freshener. And what that means is that over time, her udder is going to stay in a good position. It's not gonna get saggy. It's not gonna be uncomfortable for her. And you know, overall, she'll just stay in really good shape. I'm going to try not to give you every single detail of a goat and everything about goats because this video could be five hours long. This is supposed to be an overview for you. So the other things you wanna look at, teat size. You don't want it to be like milk in a cat. You want a teat that you can squeeze and get a good amount of milk out of with each squeeze. Hey. hey. Now, if you're not buying a goat in milk and you are buying a doling, which is a female goat under a year old, you're gonna wanna look at the udder of the dam, who's the mom, and the sire's dam. So basically the paternal grandmother. You look for those same characteristics in those two goats. And that will help you pick a good doling. This tiny little peanut is only about 48 hours old. Can you imagine that in a year she could be giving us two pounds of milk a day? Another consideration is that goats are herd animals. You cannot have just one. You need at least two. And if you pick two does, you could have milk all year long. You could breed one to kid, which is what it's called when they have their babies uh, in the winter and one in the summer. And you could have milk all year long from those goats. The next two things we're gonna talk about, the housing and the fencing for our goats. For the housing, you really don't need anything too complex. Now, right now, we're in a pretty large barn. This is what, 18 by 24, I think. But you do not need something this large. A three-sided structure is perfectly fine. I'm gonna show you three different structures that we have here on our property that we use uh, for our goats. So let me show you those first. This barn here, I actually built in our garage. It's a four-sided structure, but you don't actually need the front side. I just added that simply because we wanted to keep it a little bit warmer in there and it worked out well. You also don't need it to be as tall as it is. That was just something I uh, didn't really know at the time, but built it this way anyway. Inside is a DIY uh, hay feeder, but it works. This is another one of our structures. This is our temporary mobile goat shelter. And you can see it's just some two by six cattle panels, and tarp. I think I've also got some chicken wire on there, which isn't really necessary, but this was originally for chickens, and then we changed our minds and turned it into this. On the inside, we have a hay bag and a mineral feeder, and then we could just move this around to wherever we need it. Again, we use this in the warmer months when we can move them around and it's not cold, so we can get away with just using a tarp. And here you can see our main barn, Again, pretty big, totally unnecessary for goats, but you can go that route if you want. So that leads me to our next topic, which is fencing. Now this is a tricky one. Goats can be fence testers. They're going to test your ability to build a solid fencing structure. If you've got one little crevice somewhere, they're gonna find it and they're gonna get out. If it's not high enough, they're gonna jump over it. Even when it is high enough, 
they're probably gonna find a way to jump out of it. Every breed of goat is a tad different. I've heard a lot of stories about Nubians not really being fence testers. They just kind of do whatever and they're okay with it. But I can tell you with our Nigerian dwarfs, they will test, they will jump, they will push against the fence. It's just the nature of the animal and it's okay. Your job is to figure out how to put that up so you can minimize as much of that as you can. When we talk about types of fencing, we're looking at uh, probably two types, which would be a pain barrier fence and a physical barrier fence. Now with the pain barrier fence, we're talking about an electrified fence. We use Premier One fencing, which is what we use when we rotate our goats around the property. It is a, those fences are a low current and sort of like an alternating non-continuous uh, voltage fence, meaning it sends a shock every once in a while, not a continuous shock. Another type of fencing that a lot of folks use might be like a three or four or five wire fence. It's the high tensile wire that goes all the way around. Again, they put an energizer on that, whether it be uh, direct current or it's a solar powered one. Those are more of a continuous current and they aren't always the best for goats. Now some people use them with great success. That brings me to a physical barrier fence, which is predominantly what we use here. Now we've used two different types of fences. One is the welded wire, two inch by four inch at about four feet high and the other one is a welded wire, also two inch by four inch, about four feet high. We highly recommend a two inch by four inch fence simply because when you've got smaller goats, they're gonna find their way out of it. We learned it the hard way. We had our fence with just those hog panels. Now the problem with the hog panels is that at one end, they're real skinny. At another end, they're real wide. The day we got our goats, we put them in the pasture that we thought was gonna be fantastic. We went to the store to get some food and some other supplies for them. When we got back, they weren't in there. They were down eating some stuff uh, on the hill. Lesson learned. So if we could make any recommendation, a two inch by four inch would be fantastic, at least for the size goats that we have. Now larger goats, you could get away with maybe a four inch by four inch, and that would be good. Now in our pastures, we've set them up two different ways. One, we've got posts that were hammered into the ground. They're not going anywhere, they're permanent, they're in the ground, never gonna change. But the other one is predominantly T posts. Now the corners, those holes were dug, posts are in there, and they're braced, so that way when you pull in either direction, you're set, but that all can be removed. In terms of bedding for the goats in their housing, what you wanna put in is probably some straw. Straw is what we use and it's a perfect bedding for them. It'll help to keep them off the ground that might be a little damp, but it will also provide them with some warmth. Air actually gets trapped in the hollow pieces of the straw, which helps to insulate their bedding. Kenny, what do you know about what goats eat? I know goats eat hay <laughs> and whatever you tell me to scoop out of the buckets. And since they're labeled all nice and pretty, I don't get confused. First thing to know about feeding goats is that goats are browsers, not grazers. Ah, I knew that too. You did know, I that. Did know that. They like to eat with their head up. They like to eat a lot of different stuff. They definitely love to eat like small seedlings and the leaves on the trees sort of north, towards the bottom, more so than they do like short grass. Basically, if you're looking at grass that is under six inches, it's time to move your goats. Yeah, they don't want to eat it and you don't want them to because when they're eating really close to the ground, that's how they pick up parasites. The other thing that you're going to want for your goat is hay. You want them to have a good quality grass hay all the time. I didn't think we could talk so much about hay, but apparently somebody can. It's me. I'm hey. the somebody. You are the somebody. Hey girl! With the hay, you always want to make sure that it's up off the ground. Again, you don't want them eating directly off the ground. When you've got a goat in milk, you're also going to want to give them some grain. Make sure you buy grain that is specially formulated for goats. Feed that to them either on the milking stand or if you're feeding it in addition to their milking time, make sure it's in a dish, again, not on the ground. 
Right. The final thing that you want to consider with goat nutrition is making sure that they have a loose mineral available. They're very good at self-regulating and they'll go over and just get a little whenever they need it. I could spend several hours discussing goat's health and all of the various considerations. Could. Have. Definitely have. Just not in this video. Fine. The number one thing is find a vet who knows about goats. Not just cows, but knows about goats specifically. Find a goat mentor too. Mm -hmm. Very important. I have a great reference guide on our website, so if you'd like to check that out because you're thinking about goats, I will link that in the description. Goat grooming is pretty easy. Really all you need to do is trim their hooves. They'll shed their winter coat on their own. You might want to brush them out occasionally before milking so you don't end up with stray hairs in your milk. Eh, you know, a little fiber. There are some considerations if you are going to register any of the offspring that you have. And yes, you will have offspring if you want to have milk for more than one season. Next, let's talk about bucks. As with all other mammals, the only way you get milk from a goat is if they have babies. Even if you buy a doe in milk and you milk her for nine months, you are going to want to have milk again. Well, so what you're going to have to do is let her have babies again. You don't necessarily have to have a buck to do that. There are lots of breeders who have programs where you can use their buck to get your doe pregnant. I call that rent-a-buck. I've taken some of our bucks on a few dates. They're pretty quick. This is one of our kidding stalls. Really what you need when you have kids is to make sure that they've got a warm, dry place out of the wind where they're going to be safe and warm with their mom. It is nice to enclose them so that the mom is right there with them. Their body heat stays in. They can find the mom really easily. And all in all, goats are pretty good about giving birth. Uh, I've missed several of them recently because I checked on them and walked away and I came back and there's a baby standing on the ground. <laughs> so they're naturally pretty good mothers. And now for the best part. Fill you in on what? Yeah. You want to make sure your goat has something to eat and you're comfortable. You'll milk much better if you're seated comfortably. Honestly, the learning curve isn't bad. You've just got to jump in and do it. Before I milk her, I'm just going to wash her udder off with soap and water because obviously goats spend a lot of time outside running through the mud and laying in straw, but I don't want to use anything that I wouldn't use on my own skin. Before I start milking into the bucket, I am going to just take the teats and squirt out one stream of milk. That makes sure that if there is any dirt in the orifice of the teats, that it just gets washed out. Something I do when I'm teaching a goat to be milked is hold up one leg. They'll have a moment, but they'll get over it. This big boy was is only a week old, and since he was a single, I'm already milking his mom. Now, I don't have to worry about there not being enough milk left for him because number one, he couldn't drink all the milk that she's producing right now. And number two, does will naturally retain some milk. It's incredibly difficult, nearly impossible to hand milk out a goat completely. This is dandelion honey and she's doing a really good job for the fact that she has only been milked about six or so times so far, or six or so days, twice a day. I'm not getting much out of the one side of her right now, uh, but that's because that's the side the baby favors. I will still milk that side just so she's used to it. This milk about a week out isn't necessarily quite ready for us to drink, so I'll either give it to the cats, the dogs, or freeze it if we ever have a kid that we would have to bottle feed for whatever reason. To give you an idea, it takes me about half an hour from start to finish, meaning like when I get my milk pails ready to when I get back in the house. So why does it take you two hours to come back into the house? 
Okay, now when I'm milking, that's just when I'm hanging out with the goats. Mm -hmm. It takes me about 30 minutes to milk two goats, which is pretty quick. Think of all the times you stop for milk in a week. The other thing that I love about goats is they're very flexible. You can milk them twice a day, you can milk them once a day, they will adjust. You can also make so many other things out of goat's milk. We primarily drink it because we're huge milk drinkers, but you can make cheese, you can make soap, you yogurt. can make skincare products, beard balm, yogurt. Yeah, we do have to try some yogurt. I love me some goat's milk yogurt. Mm -hmm. If you are thinking about goats and you want more information, check out our channel. I can't stop talking about goats. No, she can't. She is always talking about goats. Well, folks, thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out all the other videos that are in this playlist, the How to Grow Your Own Food playlist. We hope you, you enjoy them and that you are learning something from them because there is tons to learn all week long. Stay tuned. If you liked what you watched today on our channel, then do us a favor, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and please leave a comment below. We'd love to know what you uh, thought of all the information that we shared. Have a great day.